After a bad breakup with his girlfriend, leaving him heartbroken, Carter Webb decides to make a fresh start by moving to Michigan to take care of his ailing grandmother. Once there, he unexpectedly becomes entangled in the lives of the mother and daughters across the street. Carter and his girlfriend, Sophia, find themselves in a summer atmosphere at a restaurant. Sophia, a rising star, expresses her frustration and decides to end their relationship. Carter, a softcore writer for similar films, is visibly hurt by the turn of events. Sophia articulates her belief that their relationship is not working, and Carter is left feeling downcast. Amid their emotional conversation, Sophia reassures Carter that she cares about him, but he remains silent, absorbing the weight of the situation. As Sophia contemplates the need for space in the relationship, Carter, understanding her sentiments, agrees to giving her the space she desires while hoping it doesn't lead to a breakup. However, Sophia has already decided to end their relationship. While in the restaurant, a group of teenage fans approaches their table, starstruck at the sight of Sophia. Despite Carter's inner turmoil, Sophia graciously signs autographs for the enthusiastic fans before they depart. From teary-eyed Carter, we witness a transformation as he appears nonchalant and numb. He puts on his glasses, walks out with a stoic expression, and heads to his car. As he goes, he receives a phone call from his manager about their adult movie project. But Carter, currently in no mood for work, hangs up without saying anything. He makes his way to his mother's house where Agnes, struggling with the challenges of dealing with Phillies, Carter's grandmother, shares her concerns. Grandma Phillies believes she is perishing, but doctors can't find anything wrong with her, adding to Agnes's worries. She expresses sadness for her mother's situation. Agnes decides to fly to Michigan, but Carter steps in, volunteering to be with Grandma Phillies. He sees it as an opportunity to focus on his writing, especially the projects he's passionate about. Agnes, curious about Sophia, is taken aback when Carter drops the bomb that he and Sophia are officially over. Carter's mom shares in his disappointment, feeling bad about the end of his relationship. However, Carter emphasizes his need for this change, his move from Los Angeles to Michigan, to overcome the heartbreak and concentrate on his writing. He reassures Agnes that everything will be fine. Agnes tries to comfort Carter, mentioning that women are always drawn to him, and assures him that he will find a great gal. However, Carter is clear in his decision, he wants to stay with his grandmother. In Michigan, Lucy drives Paige, who is singing along, and loudly thinks Paige is a bit of a freak. They arrive home to their typical middle-class American house. Sarah calls Lucy, who's in the kitchen. The conversation starts casually, discussing their day, but then Sarah drops a bombshell, she lumps in her breast. Despite the seriousness of the news, Sarah downplays it, assuring Lucy that it won't change their lives, and encourages her to continue her teenage high school life. However, Lucy, visibly worried about her mom, doesn't seem convinced. Sarah intervenes, telling Lucy that she has plans with their dad and insisting that everything will be alright. Still upset by the news, Lucy locks herself in the bathroom, deep in thought and contemplation. Finally, Carter arrives at the cozy cottage house in Michigan that belongs to Phillies, his grandma. He knocks on the door, and Phillies opens it, but she doesn't recognize him at first. Nevertheless, after Carter reintroduces himself and mentions his mother Agnes, Phillies's memory is jogged. She can't believe she's still alive to see Carter. Phillies warmly invites him inside, where he discovers that the cat is already deceased. Additionally, Phillies hasn't had much to eat except pasta in weeks, because no one has been able to cook for her. Phillies, contemplating her situation, asks Carter if he would want the house, if she were to pass away. Carter, amid a call with Agnes, is interrupted when the house phone rings and Phillies answers it. She hands the phone to Carter, and it's Javi, his employer. Javi urgently seeks to discuss an issue with the script that Carter has worked on. Carter, caught between family matters and work, takes the call. During the conversation, Carter explains the plot and attempts to convince the actress struggling with the seemingly ridiculous script. Just as the discussion intensifies, Phillies interjects, stating she is on the other line. Carter quickly informs Javi to hold on because Granny is listening. Later that night, Lucy finds herself on the rooftop indulging in a cigarette, while Carter, taking out the trash, engages in a heated argument with Phillies. As Carter deposits the trash on the side for pickup, an accidental spill elicits laughter from Lucy. Carter catches her eye but Lucy playfully runs away, hiding behind a wall, peeking to observe his reaction. Amidst the playful encounter, their dog Bozo emerges, and so does Sarah. Bozo seems to take a liking to Carter, and Sarah introduces the canine companion. Perplexed, Sarah assumes Carter is a hospice worker, not expecting Phillies to have a family. Carter corrects her, revealing he is Phillies's grandson. Sarah introduces herself and, curious, asks about Carter's background, particularly his connection to Los Angeles. Their conversation flows smoothly until the tranquility is disrupted by the arrival of Lucy's loud teenage friends and even louder cars. Sarah, sensing Lucy's discomfort, steps aside as Lucy prefers not to have her mother around, considering her embarrassment in front of her friends. One of them is Eric, who seems shy but looks like he has a thing for Lucy. As Sarah and Carter part ways, Lucy, now joined by her friends, approaches Carter, urging him not to reveal her smoking habit. 
Carter negotiates a trade and requests a cigarette, which Lucy willingly provides. The loud car with the noisy teenagers rolls off. In the morning, Sarah awakens, gazing at herself in the mirror before confirming her appointment for her breast examination. She takes a moment to check herself and continues with her morning routine, sipping coffee and attending to daily tasks. On the other side of the road, Carter begins his day by caring for fillies. Following the customary hospice care routine, which includes feeding fillies and changing her sheets, he transitions to his role as a writer. Carter immerses himself in crafting a script, intertwining personal notes for his ex-girlfriend Sophia into the storyline. As Carter goes deep into his writing, Sarah rings the bell, arriving with some half-baked cookies. However, Phillies, perhaps due to her granny-like demeanor, mistakenly addresses Sarah by a different name. Carter expresses gratitude for the cookies, and Sarah playfully admits her lack of baking skills. She confesses that the cookies are a smokescreen, an excuse to visit Carter, and she extends an invitation to walk the dog together. They set off on their walk, engaging in conversation as Carter shares his ongoing communication with his ex-girlfriend Sophia, and his desire to add a romantic touch to their interactions. Carter provides insight into his writing process, and expresses that he can't muster romantic feelings for Sophia. During their walk, Sarah candidly admits to never having received any romantic gestures in her life. They banter, establishing a genuinely great rapport. Carter discloses his fondness for talking to people and listening, though he acknowledges something might be amiss. Sarah, in turn, mentions Sophia's critique that Carter may not be a good listener. She opens up about her own life, portraying the challenges of a typical overworked, underappreciated, and unpaid mom who must take care of everyone else. Sarah reveals the strain in her relationship with Lucy, sharing her burdens with Carter, someone she has only just met. After a lengthy walk and talk, they part ways. Before parting, Sarah, revealing she's a last words freak, imparts a comforting message that everything will be alright. Carter, suggesting a repeat, is met with the reality of Sarah's upcoming appointment, leading to an agreement for another day. Carter returns inside, feeling a twinge of embarrassment about his reactions during their conversation, yet the encounter marks the beginning of a unique connection between Carter, and Sarah. Back inside, Lucy and Sarah engage in a bit of an argument, fueled by Lucy's teenage awkwardness. Sarah's simple request is that Lucy, Paige, and Carter hang out. Nelson, though, thinks it's a bad idea, as they don't know Carter that much, and it might be another stranger danger. Despite Sarah's efforts to bridge the gap, Lucy's teenage mood prevails, as Lucy keeps calling it lame. Sarah eventually gives up, feeling a sense of isolation as both her husband Nelson, and Lucy seem to be ganging up on her. Distressed, she goes to take her medication. In a quiet moment, Nelson talks to Sarah about the impending diagnosis, and he assures her that they will face it together, and that he'll support her no matter the outcome. At night, Sarah goes to check on Paige, who is doing yoga. Sarah comforts Paige, apologizing for her distracted state. Paige accepts the apology, and Sarah kisses Paige goodnight. At night, Carter administers strong tranquilizers to Phillies, who despite the potential dangers, enjoys them. After Phillies retires to bed, expressing appreciation for Carter changing the sheets, she inquires about Sophia, mentioning that Carter calls her name in his sleep. Carter is freaked that Phillies is watching him sleep, or even present in his room, and engages in a conversation with her about Sophia. The next morning, Carter jumps on the day, literally, by jumping off the porch and jogging while listening to his iPod. However, flashbacks of Sophia flood his mind, from their first meeting to the end of their relationship distracting him to the point where he nearly stumbles and collides with the tree. Lucy checks on him, offering a ride home, but despite insisting he's fine, Carter eventually accepts and rides in Lucy's car. Expressing gratitude with a wave, Carter begins to contemplate the impact of his presence on Lucy's life. As they drive, Lucy opens up about a conflict with her mother, regarding the idea of Lucy asking Carter for a date night or movie night. Lucy feels it might be strange, but Carter, considering her parents' lack of concern about her hanging out with a stranger on a school night, sees it differently. Upon returning home, Carter finds Phillies standing oddly and learns about a broken toilet. Promising to fix it, Carter gladly takes on the task. The couple, Nelson and Sarah, arrive back home, their faces reflecting a grim reaction that hints at potentially bad news regarding Sarah's health. Sarah decides to break the news to Paige, while Nelson opts to share it with Lucy. Lucy picks up Paige, and the two drive back home. Despite the tense atmosphere, Lucy and Paige showcase a great sibling relationship. As they return, they sense that the air is tense. Paige, keenly observant, detects that something is up. Separately, Sarah takes Paige aside to share the news, and Nelson does the same with Lucy. The siblings seem shaky and nervous about the big bad news. In the restaurant, Sarah takes a moment to share the news with Paige. Paige, concerned, asks if it hurts, prompting Sarah to logically explain the upcoming chemotherapy process. Worrying about her mother, Paige confesses to stealing $20 from Sarah's purse. However, Sarah, acknowledging Paige's financial responsibility, reassures her. Paige admits this because she couldn't like to Sarah. Feeling guilty for her honesty, Paige encourages Sarah to share the truth about her pain. 
The next day begins, with Sarah waking up groggy and attending to her skincare routine. Carter also rises, taking a shower. As Sarah stands at the door, she compliments Carter, noting that he looks better than the previous day. They decide to take Bozo for a walk. During their stroll, Sarah inquires about Sophia, questioning whether she was Carter's first love. Carter opens up about his romantic patterns and preferences. After a contemplative pause, Sarah leads Carter into the woods, because she wants to show Carter that it is her happy place when she wants peace. Unexpectedly, Sarah discloses that Nelson has been having an affair, a revelation she discovered some time ago, but chooses not to address. She reflects on her comfortable life and the impact on their daughters, then breaks down in tears. Sarah minimizes the significance, citing Nelson as a good provider. Carter sympathizes with her. Sarah admits she doesn't love Nelson the way Carter loves Sophia. However, Carter counters, stating it doesn't seem like love to him either, expressing uncertainty about his feelings for Sophia. Sarah, seeking comfort, asks for a hug and wonders if it's weird. Carter, unfazed, accepts. As they return to the suburban homes, Sarah requests that Carter keep Nelson's cheating mess a secret from Lucy. During the conversation, Sarah informs Carter about Lucy and him going out for movies on weeknights, considering the possibility of Sarah's busy schedule due to doctor appointments. Carter really wants to hang out with Sarah more. But then Sarah mentions needing to get groceries, leading them to the store, where they continue their conversation. Sarah recounts her time in New York, feeling awake and happy in the Met. She also shares many happy memories, especially during moments with Paige. She expresses her desire to return to New York City and visit the Met again. Sarah opens up about her therapy, and hints at wanting to share the reality of her situation with Carter. In response, Carter jokingly suggests that Nelson might be crazy, and can't believe he is cheating on Sarah. Carter asks if Sarah has plans for the night, but she dismisses it as nothing important. Suddenly Carter receives a message from Agnes, and a raccoon attempts to enter the room, prompting Carter to shoo it away. At the Hartwick's residence, Lucy is painting when Paige interrupts, dressed up and eager to show her something. Despite the tough situation, Paige is getting ready for her mall date with Carter and Lucy. Lucy suggests reconsidering and just staying the night because of the family problem, but Paige stays optimistic. She says that when something's going wrong, she is far more ready to research any concerns on the internet. Paige excels in her homework, diving into cancer and chemotherapy processes. Paige breaks down the info for Lucy, explaining that in a few weeks, Sarah might not feel well and might undergo a mastectomy, which is a very difficult thing for patients. She researches chemotherapy and thinks about ways to support Sarah. Lucy asks if Paige is scared, and while acknowledging her fear, Paige says that it's much more important to be supportive than afraid. Carter, Paige, and Lucy are at the mall. Paige, excited, gets compared to young Carter. Sophia's poster as she is modeling for Levy's is there, and Carter stops for a bit. Paige, impressed by Sophia, admires the model. Overwhelmed, Carter goes to the bathroom, where he pep talks in front of the mirror, encouraging himself to act like a man and deal with moving on. Later, Eric, Lucy's friend, comes out from a stall, recognizing Carter, though Carter can't recall the acquaintance. Paige, recognizing the crew guy as a server at her favorite food stall, shares her love for the special drink. Eric proudly mentions he built the juice cart with his own funds, and acts awkward around Lucy, whom he clearly likes. Carter and the crew guy part ways without exchanging names. They settle for eating in the food court, where Carter engages in conversation with the girls. Due to the age gaps, Lucy and Paige can't relate to pop culture with Carter. However, Paige actively participates in the conversation. Lucy points out that they are not completely naive in Michigan, despite living in the suburbs. They struggle to decide on what to watch. Later that night, Carter, Lucy, and Paige head home. Paige feels sick, but both sisters thank Carter for a nice night. They all go inside their respective houses. Carter tries calling Sophia, but there's no answer. Later, Lucy knocks on Carter's window, inviting him out. They joyride to a sports park. Lucy smokes again and talks about dating the quarterback of the football team, Gabe. Initially serious, Lucy later clarifies that they're not really dating but just hang out a lot. Lucy introduces Eric, Gabe's best friend from the mall. Lucy describes Gabe as confident but very cocky. Carter asks more questions, and Lucy reveals that they kissed. Suddenly, Lucy shares that Nelson is having an affair. She feels strange because she's not mad at their dad, but rather angry at their mom. Lucy describes her perception of Sarah, expressing that she doesn't want to be like her. She characterizes Sarah as cold, superficial, seemingly more concerned about keeping everything in place, and notes that Sarah doesn't even get mad. Carter, though aware of Lucy's feelings, finds it unfair for her to hate Sarah. He wonders why Lucy confided in him, and Lucy apologizes. Carter acknowledges Lucy's creative pursuits, mentioning her painting. Despite not being a painter herself, Lucy paints to calm down, and expresses her fear of fully kissing Gabe. Carter reassures her, saying everything will be fine. On a stormy night, Carter cooks while Phillies cleans the floor, but Carter doesn't want her to clean up. Carter, noticing Phillies freak out about a vibrating phone, assumes it's his boss and worries about losing his job. He lies to Phillies, claiming to be a children's book writer. Phillies shares her own stories about kids, 
but resents them, but she wants to read Carter's work before she passes. Carter reacts angrily, insisting that Phillies will not pass away, and asking her to stop saying it. Despite Phillies' desire for hospice care, Carter is resistant. A delivery arrives, and Sarah is outside getting soaked, so Carter joins her. She reveals to Carter that she has breast cancer, and they need to start removing her breasts the next day to stop the spread. Sarah is in disbelief and breaks down, crying. Carter comforts her, assuring her that everything will be alright, and they share a passionate kiss. Later, Carter attempts to write about Sarah's situation, but faces writer's block. Instead, he creates a children's story about Pandy the Bear, which is a metaphor for his life or the people around him. A second ring at the door prompts Phillies to answer without pants on, horrifying Carter. He scolds Phillies. Carter struggles to be firm with his grandmother. Lucy waits in Carter's room, reporting that Sarah is undergoing chemotherapy. Lucy suggests Carter check on Sarah, but he's hesitant, feeling it may not be a good idea. Lucy also reveals that Gabe is pressuring her to hook up, but Lucy resists. Because of this, Gabe hooks up with one of Lucy's friends instead. Carter gives some advice. Lucy invites Carter to go to a teenage party just to be a chaperone, as Carter is older and wiser. Carter hesitates, but he goes anyway. As they arrive, they are welcomed by a couple of teenagers. Carter, though, recognizes a kid whose father must be involved with Agnes, his mom. Eric is also present at the party. One of the girls drags Lucy for a gossip tea time, and she is separated from Carter. So Carter is cool with it and vibes with the teenage crowd. He goes up and sees the trophy displays upstairs by the man of the house. Carter later gets a call from Sophia, who is overwhelmed by her own fame and is feeling sad. She claims she misses Carter because Carter is always there for her, comforting her. But then, they get interrupted by Gabe and his jock cult following, because Carter is always with Lucy. Also, Gabe blames Carter for his ruined relationship with Lucy. They go outside for a confrontation, only for Carter to mock Gabe. As a response, Gabe punches him. Carter doesn't seem affected and mocks him further. So this angers Gabe more, and he comes at Carter, but it's a perfect timing because Eric suddenly jumps and lands a punch on Gabe. Eric is sick and tired of Gabe, especially his treatment of Lucy. He leaves. Lucy comes out of the house, sees the whole thing, and drags Carter out of it. Arriving at the neighborhood, Lucy and Carter argue. Lucy chases Carter and kisses him, although Carter gives in for a second, he stops Lucy. Unknown to them, Sarah is inside watching the whole thing unfold. Carter starts his morning ritual of jogging. He visits Sarah at her home, but Sarah doesn't want Carter any closer. She complains of body pains, attributing it to her fault and responsibility. However, she insists that Carter can't be with her daughter. Carter apologizes, attempting to explain his side, but Sarah rejects any connection with him. Carter leaves a letter at the door before leaving. Sarah's condition worsens as she loses her hair, leading her to take out an electric shaver and buzz off all her hair. Meanwhile, Lucy is in full artistic mode, brushing strokes on a canvas wall, and painting a self-portrait. She knocks on Carter's door, but he is not feeling better. Lucy desires a connection with Carter, who clarifies that he is not mad at her, but doesn't want to see her anymore. Lucy discovers Sarah getting weaker and clumsier, almost falling on the floor and later vomiting her guts out. Unable to reach Nelson, Lucy takes matters into her own hands, taking Sarah to the hospital. Sarah is experiencing a fever that makes her feel terrible. Nelson and Paige arrive, with Paige crying at the sight of Sarah in pain. Nelson, apologetic for not answering, is there to support. Meanwhile, Carter continues writing. He calls Sophia, who seems to be in high spirits, partying with others. However, when Carter introduces himself, Sophia suddenly does not remember him, appearing very drunk. It is the opposite of their last call. Carter takes Phillies to dinner, feeling down because of his lack of achievements and his inability to write the book he desires. Phillies offers advice, but Carter senses that something is missing. Phillies advises him to stop complaining because he will live, unlike her. In the hospital, Sarah is already awake, and Lucy is by the door. Sarah asks why Lucy is mad at her. Lucy explains that it's hard to say, because she is angry for every reason. Sarah reveals that the surgery was successful, and chemotherapy is going well. She assures Lucy that the symptoms are just part of the process, and not a big deal. Sarah admits to making mistakes, but promises to always be there. She asks Lucy for one thing in return, to quit smoking. Lucy promises and hugs Sarah. Sarah later reads Carter's letter, a romantically charged message she has never received before. Carter expresses his hope that Sarah embraces everything she has never done or been, and should take Lucy with her. Lucy drives away, but unexpectedly swerves in another direction, heading to the mall. There she spots Eric, and both share a smile. Carter completes his children's book, and is excited to show it to Phillies. Unfortunately, when he arrives, Phillies is unconscious. Despite Carter's attempts to wake her up, she has passed away on her couch. Instead of immediately calling Agnes or the hospice, Carter leaves the house to get some air. He notices Bozo and Sarah outside, with Sarah looking better. Sarah mentions the letter Carter wrote, and although Carter doesn't disclose Phillies' passing, they bid each other goodbye. Later, at a diner, Carter faces another writing block and strikes up a conversation with the server. He asks for any ideas, as he is currently writing about his grandma. 
Carter invites the girl to critique his work, and she accepts, so Carter lets her read it, 